Good evening to everyone. We thank God for his goodness, and we thank God for all of you who have joined us at this time. We're going to have a moment of prayer. The bride is going to come with the youth. Dear God in heaven, again, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. I want to thank you for all things. But truly, you have been good to us this day. You have allowed us to be alive. and That is a blessing. That is a privilege and, a, and an honor. Lord, you have blessed those who have gone to the job sites to come home. Children have gone to school and have returned home. You're blessed, oh God, and many of us who are not punching the clock. Lord, to do the things that we wanted and needed to do. It is you, Lord, that kept the enemy from devouring us. We thank you. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your love, your mercy. We thank you for all. You are so wonderful. You are so worthy. God, you are worthy of the praises. You are worthy of the glory, the honor. It belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, God, just have your way. Have your way in us, God, in our, in our souls. Have your way in our lives, oh God. I pray that you will bless this ministry, the youth Bible study, God. Lord, that the teachings that go forth, that it be a blessing, that it will encourage our young people to have a deeper relationship with you. Lord, that would cause them to want to cry out to you, uh, Lord, that they might be saved. Touch the youth, oh God. Touch their minds. Touch their hearts, Lord. Let this word that is being taught in these sessions, let it penetrate the heart. Let it, oh God, cause them, Lord, to want to seek you and allow you to be both Lord and Savior. We pray, God, for just young people in general. We pray for them, Lord, as they go to school, that you keep them, God. But we're, we're in a dangerous time now. Lord, keep them, keep, oh God, this COVID-19 virus away from them and bless them, Lord. And not only the virus, but Lord, other dangers that they can run into, whether they're at home or at school. Lord, protect our children. Preserve them, oh God. Yes, God. In the name of, Jesus, name of Jesus, I pray, God, that in the midst of this crisis, uh, that, that at school, that they would do well that they yet will learn what they need to learn. Lord, that they can grow up and be proper to uh, citizens in this land and not of what they learn that it can be used for your kingdom. Yes. Help now, Lord, help now. Yes, Lord, we need your help, oh God. We need you, God, for this youth ministry. Yes, Lord, we want to see it flourish. We want to see young people saved. Yes, Lord, we want to be able to Bring them back to church, oh God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, there are many adults who attend youth Bible study as well. Let them get a word, Lord. Let them yes, receive God. nourishment, oh God, from your word, Lord. Yes, God. Just have your way, God. Have your way, oh God. In all of our lives. Yes, God. Help us, Lord, that help we will draw closer to you. Help. Lord, that we may set our affection on things above, yes, not on this earth, oh God. Help us to realize that time. Is winding up. Yes, God. And this life that we know of today, after a while, it will no longer be God. Yes, God. So again, we must be ready, Lord, when that time comes. Face you in peace. Yes, we hear God. you say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for what you already have done. Yes, and Lord, God. what you're getting ready to do. Let this night, Lord, let it be a good night. This time. Of study, oh God, anoint the teacher, give up what to say and how to say it. And give, oh God, every person that's present, give them the ears and hearts to receive your word. Yes, God. Lord, that, that we may grow. Lord, that, that salvation will come, deliverance will come. We thank you again. Yes, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, yes, amen and amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. All right. We want to give it into the hands of our teacher for this evening. Hello, hello, hello. We just study God's word. We thank God for who he is right now. And without any further delay, I want to say, uh, make sure that your children are on. Make sure that your children are on. I see some of our children are here. Glad to see you on today. 
Glad to see you on today. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing from people now. And my child should be on. Yes, ma'am. He, he's on. Just glad to have everybody on. Now, we know that we talked about David last week, and we found out that his father, well, we found out that um, the prophet Samuel, we found out the prophet Samuel went to uh, Jesse, David's father, to anoint the next king because God had rejected Saul as king. And so he goes to, to anoint the next king and all of Jesse's sons, all seven of them come before uh, Samuel and the oil will not pour. God says, none of these are the right ones. And, he, and so Samuel said, do you have another son? He said, well, I got my son, David. He's out there tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. So when he sends for him, true enough, the oil comes flows because he is the one that God has chosen. So I, I even recall the scripture in the New Testament that talks about, uh, that says, um, don't let anyone despise your youth. Look, because you're young does not mean you cannot live for God. God saved me when I was 15. God saved my husband when he was about 12. So listen, whatever age you are, God can save you. I've known people even younger than that, years old, that God saved. So God is in the same. He can have a personal relationship with you. And we learned that through uh, the life of David, because David was only 17 years old at the time that, uh, of our lesson tonight. Bible scholars believe he was 17 years old. So without any further delay, we're going to go ahead and... Um, Pull him up. This is lesson two. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Let's see if I can share my screen. Yeah, here we go. So David meets Goliath. Now, uh, it's. I hope a lot of our young people have heard this story. Uh, sadly, sometimes in literature, uh, we, we meet uh, biblical allusions. We talk about biblical allusions, and an allusion is a reference to someone from the Bible in literature or in our discussions. And so when we talk about biblical allusions, sometimes I talk to the children, I want to know who is Moses, who is Goliath, who is Samson. And some of our children have no clue uh, who these Bible characters are. So I say this uh, to our young people, look, invite your friends. And but look, don't be shamed that you go to Bible study. And there, the Bible says, if you're ashamed to own me before men, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. That's what Jesus said. So we, we cannot be ashamed uh, of studying the Bible. We cannot be ashamed of going to church. We cannot be ashamed of, of who Jesus is. We want to share him with the world. So I wanted to put that in because our children need to know that um, we need to invite our, invite our friends so that they can learn who Jesus is. I tell, I, I tell, I love to read. I, I, I encourage my students to read. But years ago, I had an advanced class and we were talking about something and you know, all of the reading that I had them to do, I let them know, I said, the best book in the world that you can read is the Bible. Make no mistake about it. That's the greatest book in the world. So tonight, David meets Goliath. All right, are you ready, young people? Get your paper and pencil. I hope you have a journal. I hope you have somewhere where you can keep your notes so that when we do our little test, when we do our little test, we'll be able to... Uh, do well. I also want to say to you that I am going to start taking the role. I'm going to start taking the role because we gave away gift cards last year. And this year, we want to do even greater than the $25 gift cards. That's what we gave away for Christmas. If the Lord blesses us to live for this Christmas, we want to do even more. But we want our children to be faithful. We want our children to be faithful to youth Bible study. So I'm going to start taking the role. Uh, at the end, I'm going to give you a link so that you can give, uh, you can sign in for if you were here the last time and you can sign in for today. All right, are you ready? The Philistines got ready for war. 
and brought their troops together to attack the sound of Sukkah in Judah. They set up camp at Ephes Damon between Sukkah and Azekah. Now you see these names are not the hardest thing, uh, easiest thing to pronounce. But I tell my students at school, when you get to names that you can't pronounce, and especially in the Bible, if you say they set up camp at ED, you call it ED, you will know where it is. And, and, and sucker, you can call it S and A. The most important thing is that you know what happened in the scriptures. King Saul, we remember King Saul is the king. And the Israelite army set up camp on a hill overlooking Elah Valley. And they got ready to fight the Philistine army that was on a hill on the other side of the valley. So we have two groups here. We have Israel, who is fighting the Philistines. They're ready to fight the Philistines. And you know, war was common in Bible days. So we have the Philistines against Israel. We know that Israel, they are God's chosen people. So uh, they, these are the two groups that are ready to fight, Israel and the Philistines, all right? The Philistine army had a hero named Goliath, who was from the town of Gath and was over nine feet tall. Now, some Bible scholars even say he was uh, as tall as 13 feet. Now, I want you to look at the roof in the house wherever you are. And uh, if we go with the nine feet, he was tall enough to touch that roof. He was at least tall enough to touch your roof. He wore a bronze helmet and had a bronze armor to protect his chest and legs. The chest armor alone weighed about 125 pounds. You know, most of us can't even uh, carry something. that's uh, We can't lift up 125 pounds, let alone having something that weighs that much. He carried a bronze sword strapped on his back. And his spear was so big that the iron spearhead alone weighed more than 15 pounds. A soldier always walked in front of Goliath to carry his sword. Goliath went out and shouted to the army of Israel, why are you lining up for battle? I'm the best soldier in our army and all of you are in Saul's army. Choose your best soldier to come out and fight me. If he can kill me, our people will be slaves. But if I kill him, your people will be slaves. Here and now, I challenge Israel's whole army. Choose someone to fight me. Saul and his men heard what Goliath said but they were so frightened of Goliath that they couldn't do a thing. Now imagine this man, just imagine talking to someone who is tall enough to reach your ceiling. And this man says, hey, choose your best soldier to come out and fight me. You know, we met bullies in school, those people who think they're so bad, nobody can whip them. And so they, they, they uh, think that they are the baddest thing since, you know, the, to come through the school or wherever you, you met them at. And so that's the kind of person Goliath was. He was like, you choose your best uh, person to come out and fight me. If we win, you ought to be our slaves. And if y'all win, we're going to be your slaves. All right. Everybody in Saul's army, the Israelites were afraid. David's father, Jesse, was an old man who belonged to the Ephra clan and lived in Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons. The oldest was Eliab. The next was Abinadab, and Shammah was the third. The three of them had gone off to fight in Saul's army. David was Jesse's youngest son. He took care of his father's sheep, and he went back and forth between Bethlehem and Saul's camp. Goliath came out and gave his challenge every morning and every evening for 40 days. 
Now we know that a month has about 30, 31 days. So consider somebody walking up to you for 31 days and then add nine more for an entire month and, and about 10 to uh, nine to 10 more days. Every day Goliath came out and said the same thing. He wanted somebody to fight him. Isn't that something? Something? All right. One day, Jesse told David, hurry and take this sack of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread to your brother at the army camp, to your brothers at the army camp. And here are 10 large chunks of cheese to take to their commanding officer. Find out how your brothers are doing and bring back something that shows that they are all right. There was Saul's army fighting the Philistines in Elah Valley. David obeyed his father. You know, I see David kind of like Joseph is. You know, you know how the daddy send the youngest child out to check on the older brother. You know, they're in the army that, you know, they're in this war. And so the, the daddy is concerned about them, uh, David father Jesse is. So David uh, obeyed his father. He got up early the next morning and left someone else in charge of the sheep. Then he loaded the supplies and started off. He reached the army camp just as the soldiers were taking their places and shouting the battle cry. The army of Israel and the army and the Philistine army stood there facing each other. David left his things with the man in charge of supplies and ran up to the battle line to ask his brothers if they were well. While David was talking with them, Goliath came out from the line of Philistines and started boasting as usual. David heard him. So not only was uh, Goliath big and ferocious, but he was proud and arrogant. He was a boaster. He was boasting out there as usual. Remember, he gave them this challenge for 40 days. Verse 24, when the Israelite soldiers saw Goliath, they were scared and ran off. They said to each other, look how he's, he keeps coming out to insult us. The king is offering a big reward to the man who kills Goliath. That man will even get to marry the king's daughter and no one in his family will ever have to pay taxes again. David asked some soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing Philistin, this Philistine and stopping him from insulting our people? Who does this worthless Philistine think he is? He's making fun of the army of the living God. The soldiers told David what the king would give the man who killed Goliath. So David said, who is, and I, now I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching youth Bible study, so we use the common English uh, version, but I absolutely love the King James version. And the way David says is in the King James version, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who would defy the armies of God? I want you to know something. When you belong to God, you belong, you are somebody and you belong to somebody. So you can act like it. So David began to look at that thing and say, who, who is this who would come out here and insult God's army? You have to be crazy. All right. Did I miss one? Okay, yes. No, I didn't. Okay. David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard him talking with the soldiers. Eliab was angry at him and said, what are you doing here anyway? Who's taking care of that little flock of sheep out in the desert? You spoiled brat. You came here just to watch the fighting, didn't you? Doesn't that sound like an older brother? Who is David? Go out there and watch them little sheep you got. That's what you need to be. You're nothing but a spoiled brat. Verse 29. Now, what have I done? David answered. Can I even ask a question? Then he turned and asked another soldier the same thing he had asked the others. And he got the same answer. Some soldiers overheard David talking 
So they told Saul what David had said. Saul sent for David and David came. Your majesty, he said, this Philistine shouldn't turn us into cowards. I'll go out and fight him myself. Now remember, David's just a boy. Who is he to try to go out and fight somebody that's at least nine feet tall? He's a giant, people. Verse 33, you don't have a chance against him, Saul replied. You're only a boy, and he's been a soldier all his life. So not only is he over nine feet tall, not only is he braggadocious or is he, does he keep bragging, not only is he, uh, is he big and strong and has this great armor, but also he's been a, a soldier all his life. So he also has experience. So Saul looked at that thing and said, David is just a boy. At this time, he's only about 20, uh, 17, somewhere between 17 and 20 years old. You don't stand a chance against this giant. And I want to say to some of you, sometimes things happen in our lives that look us in the face and they tell us you don't stand a chance, but you got to have the courage of David and you got to know that you know when you belong to God, that you are more than everybody who could be against us. The Bible say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Your majesty, I take care of my father's sheep. And when one of them is dragged off by a lion or a bear, I go after it and beat the wild animal until it lets the sheep go. If the wild animal turns and attacks me, I grab it by the throat and kill it. Sir, I have killed lions and bears that way, and I can kill this worthless Philistine. He shouldn't have made fun of the army of the living God. The Lord has rescued me from the claws of lions and bears, and he will keep me safe from the hands of this Philistine. All right, Saul answered, go ahead and fight him, and I hope the Lord will help you. Listen, David began to give his testimony. He said, look, I remember when I fought bears and I fought lions and God Almighty brought me through. David even recalled the time that I have killed bears and lions and it was nobody but God. Listen, let me tell you something. When God brings you through something, don't you get the big head. Don't you talk about what you've done. You point everybody to Jesus. You talk about what Jesus has done, what God has done. Saul had his own military clothes and armor put on David, and he gave David a bronze helmet to wear. David strapped on his sword and tried to walk around, but he was not used to wearing those things. I can't move with all this stuff on, David said. I'm just not used to it. David took off the armor and picked up his shepherd's stick. He went out to a stream and picked up five smooth rocks and put them in his leather bag. Then with his sling in his hand, he went straight toward Goliath. Now, if you look at this through the natural eye, David would have to be crazy. David does not want all of this armor. He does not want all of these swords, all this stuff, this helmet. I cannot go with these is what he says in the King James Version. But he says he, he, he picks up the shepherd stick and he picks up five rocks. Anybody that looks at this naturally would know David would have to be crazy. Take a look at this picture and look at these men, how they're looking at David. I believe his brothers thought the same thing. You know what, David, I don't know who David thinks he is, but yeah, let him go on out there and fight Goliath. Because remember that, they were cowards. So none of them were willing. So Saul figures, hey, I don't have anybody else to fight him. If David think he can whoop him and the Lord is with him, let him go out and try. So the men were just looking. 
Goliath came toward David, walking behind the soldier who was carrying his shield. When Goliath saw that David was just a healthy, good-looking boy, he made fun of him. Do you think I'm a dog, Goliath asked? Is that why you come after me with a stick? He cursed David in the name of the Philistine gods and shouted, come on, when I'm finished with you, I'll feed you to the birds and wild animals. David answered, you've come out to fight me with a sword and a spear and a dagger, but I've come out to fight you in the name of the Lord all-powerful. He is the God of Israel's army and you have insulted him too, I tell you. I get excited just talking about it, just talking about the courage that David had, just talking about the fact that David knew who he was and David knew who God was. Oh my God, I'm getting excited around here. I want y'all to know something. When you belong to God and when you know that you know that you know, the scriptures say God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. See, God wants to work the power in you. And once you realize the power that works in you, you can fight those giants too. You can fight the giants in your life. Those giants of depression, those giants of fear, those giants of, of unbelief, whatever giant you're facing in your life, you have to fight it like David did. Today, the Lord will help me defeat you. I'll knock you down and cut off your head and I'll feed the bodies of the other Philistine soldiers to the birds and wild animals. Then the whole world will know that Israel has a real God. Everybody here will see that the Lord doesn't need swords or spears to, shape, to save his people. The Lord always wins his battles and he will help us defeat you. Listen to David's testimony. The Lord wins every battle and he will help us to defeat you. When Goliath started forward, David ran toward Goliath. David ran to the problem. He ran to the giant. He knew who his God was and he, had, he went at him head on. Oh my goodness. He put a rock in his sling and swung the sling around by its straps. When he let go of one strap, the rock flew out and hit Goliath on the forehead. It cracked his skull and he fell face down on the ground. David defeated Goliath with a sling and a rock. He killed him without even using a sword. David ran over and pulled out Goliath's sword. Then he used it to cut off Goliath's head. I want y'all to realize something. Goliath was dead when he hit the ground. Goliath was dead when he hit the ground. But what happened is, David, many times in war back then, the, the winners would, would take the head of those who, who, uh, who had been defeated. And so that's exactly what David had in mind. David ran over and pulled out Goliath's sword. Then he used it to cut off Goliath's head. When the Philistines saw what had happened to their hero, they started running away. But the soldiers of Israel and Judah let out a battle cry and went after them as far as Gath and Ekron. The bodies of the Philistines were scattered all along the road from Sherim to Gath and Ekrim. When the Israelite army returned from chasing the Philistines, they took what they wanted from the enemy camp. David took Goliath's head to Jerusalem, but he kept Goliath's weapon to his, in his own tent. After King Saul had watched David go out to fight Goliath, Saul turned to the commander of his army and said, Abner, who is that young man? Your majesty, Abner answered. I swear by your life that I don't know. Then find out, Saul told him. When David came back from fighting Goliath, he was still carrying Goliath's head. Abner took David to Saul 
And Saul asked, who are you? I am David, the son of Jesse, a royal, a loyal Israelite from Bethlehem. All right. If we want to know uh, the gist of this lesson, God never loses a battle. And when we realize who we are in God and the God who we serve, that he's sovereign, that he's all powerful, that he's all knowing, it will be then that we will understand the power that works in us. All right, two things I wanna do here. I wanna go ahead and let you play the game and then I'm gonna give you, I'm going to give you the sign in for today. All right, if you're on Facebook, you go to joinmyquiz.com. Let me make sure I got this, the good share. Sister Riley, can you put it? Can you put the um, the uh, the link in it um, in the chat? All right, here you go, right here. The link is in the chat for those of you who are on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, go to joinmyquiz.com, and you can go to enter the bank code one two five four zero one one two five four zero one. All right. All right, I see three people on. Where are you? Where are the rest of our children? One, two, five, four, zero, one. All right, five of us are in. Any adults want to play? Get right in. One, two, five, four, zero, one. I want to also say this. Listen, there are some adults at Lily of the Valley who make it their business to always invest in the youth Bible study. I want you to know how much we appreciate you. I want you to know how much we appreciate you. Many of you are, are sharing with our youth and I want you to know how much we appreciate you. If you wanna share tonight, you can share with us at cash app or cash tag L-O-T-B-C-O-G-I-C. You can share with us at L-O-T-B or Lily of the Valley C-O-G-I-C. You can share with us tonight to be a blessing to our youth. All right, we got six people in. We're going to go ahead and get started. Let me see on Facebook if I need to do a new share. All right, here. Let's see what we got here. I think we're, yeah, we're on here. So let's get started. Oh, I got that real quick, didn't we? We know that Saul is the king. Everybody got that. All right. Who is David? Easy, easy, easy questions. This this uh, quizzes was already made. They already have a lot of Bible quizzes already made. All right. We know that David was the boy who, he was the kid. He was just a kid at this time, right? Somebody said he was a soldier. David was not a soldier. David had never been a soldier. He was just a kid. David's father that had him last week too, didn't he? Who is David's father? You want to play along at home? There is your question. All right. You know that David's father is Jesse. All right. I'm sure everybody got, ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. David's father is Jesse, not Saul, not Samuel. David's father is Jesse. see at home. Who does Saul try to give David? What does Saul, I'm sorry, try to give David?
helped us all try to give David. Got five seconds. Y'all forgot? Remember he tried to give him his armor? Sister Riley, it kicked me at the game. I can't hear you. It kicked me out the game. Oh, it did? You want to get back in right quick? There you go. I kicked him out. Sometimes quizzes does that. I don't know why. But if you want to get back in, you can get back in. You can uh, go back to the chat. Oh, let me put it back in the chat right quick. If you're back in Zoom, I'm going to put you. Here it is back in the chat. You can go there right quick. Go back to the chat and you can um, get in again. He's telling me I have low. I got back in. Okay, awesome, awesome. Let me see why is it telling me I have low these applications. Anybody who knows me and ever saw my computer, I have open about 30 browsers at one time. And it, it drives my children crazy. All right, let's go to our next question. It was the, the answer was armor. He tried to give him his armor. What did David's father give to David to take his brother? What did he give to David to take his brother? Let's see what I... Swords, food, sheep, or armor? Got 10 seconds. Five seconds, get your answer in. Yes, you have to. All right, the correct answer is food. Gave him food. That's what we look like here. All right, two, only two people got that. Now, David's father, why would he send uh, David to take his brother's sheep or armor or swords? He gave him food. Y'all got to be paying attention now. So I told you take some notes if you need to. How long did Goliath challenge the Israelites? I said that about two or three times. So if you were listening, you should have it. them for 40 days. You remember we talked about a month and a little over a month, about nine or 10 days past a month. 40 days, four of you got it, four of you got it. All right. What was David's job during the war? What was David's job during the war? What I answer choice. Was he a shepherd, a musician, or a soldier? No. All right, somebody didn't get your answers in there. All right. Y'all don't remember what was he doing? A shepherd takes care of sheep, right? He was taking care of his father's sheep. He was not a soldier. We said that earlier. We said that earlier. He was not a soldier. He was. A he took care of his father's sheep. What instrument did David play? We talked about this last week. When Saul would get in a rage, David would go and play this instrument. We know David played the harp. David, the harp. All right. All right, the harp. Three of you got it right. Three of you got it right. 
Come on, you gotta redeem yourself, people. How many brothers did David have? How many brothers did David have? Those of you at home, let me give you, did he have seven, six, four, or five? How many brothers did David have? Seven, six, four, or five. 10 seconds. Five seconds. We know David had what? He had seven brothers. He made the eight. He had seven brothers. Uh, Sister Riley, I put in seven, but it said I got it wrong. All right, that 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 answer is wrong. I'll have to report that question. He had seven brothers. Jesse had eight boys, and I know they probably got that from a a, a different uh, source. But in the chapters that we've studied, he had seven brothers. That Jesse had eight sons. So I don't even know where they could have gotten six from. Even with even with the um, the other source that I looked at, that's not correct. So I will correct that and give you credit for it. Jaden, you say it won't let you answer. Did you try going to the chat and going again and again? I don't know what's going on. Jaden said it won't let him answer. I'm gonna put it in the chat where we're at number 10 now. Oh, it's letting you answer now. That's one thing about technology, it is imperfect. Who does David grow up to be? Who does he grow up to be? A soldier, a musician, or a king? A soldier, a musician, or a king? Who does he grow up to be? Let me see what y'all got for this. He grows up to be the king. Very good, all y'all got that one. You got that. You got two more. How long was the war? How long was the war? Let's see what our answer choices are. Three days, 40 days, seven days, or 12 days. Remember, every day they go out there and fight and go live and come out there and show out. We just had this one too. Paid attention early, you could get it. All right, we know that it was 40. See how many you got there? Were you paying attention? All right, 40 days. Four of you got a two of you still missed it. Where are you? Our last one. This is the last chance. were challenging the Israelites. We were challenging the Israelites, whether it the Philistines, the Egyptians, the Romans, or Goliath. Who was challenging? Who was who were challenging them? What was the name of that army that they went out against? Now this question is unclear because two of these could be the answer, wasn't it? Can it? see what they got. All right, let's see what we got. All right, Goliath and the Philistines, both of them are correct. So you got credit for both of those. You got credit for both of those, whether you put Goliath or the Philistines, you got credit for both of them. Great job, great job. I got to report that one question because it is incorrect. So I'll go back and do that. But to our children, I'm going to go ahead and put this up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. I want you to do it twice. If you were here for last week's Bible study and this week, I want you to do this twice. It's going to ask you for the date. It's going to ask you for the date. Let me go ahead and get it in here first. If you have, if you were here for both of them, I'm going to put it in. What was the date for last week, Miss Riley? Uh, today is the 13, 13 out of 76. So it was the sixth. So here we go. 
you're going to fill it out twice. If you were here last week and you're here this week, you want to do one for today and one for last week. To our youth, let me know that you were here both days. Let me know that you were here both days. I also have uh, your quizzes from last week also, because some people were here last week who are not here this week. So I will, I'll, I will fill it out for them if they were not, if they're not here. What was the day again, Sister Riley? Today is the 13th. So seven from 13 is six. So January 6th and January 13th, those are the two days. So be sure you, pat, you fill it out twice. January 6th and January 13th. All right, I have enjoyed, I've really enjoyed you all. I've really enjoyed you all. So make sure you, uh, it's, you can go ahead and when you fill out the first time, it's gonna say, I think it's gonna say, submit another answer. So you go ahead and submit another answer and you will be finished. God bless you. I really enjoyed being with you. I enjoyed this lesson. Listen, let me tell you something. Know that if there are giants, if you are fighting giants in your life, as we sometimes will, you need to know who you live for. When you live for God, he promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. And there is no battle that he will not help you through. If he wants you to it, he'll bring you through it. So because of the fall of Adam, sometimes people want to know uh, why do we suffer? Yes, unfortunately, we, we suffer sometimes because of Adam's original sin. This earth is cursed. And so we feel the effects of that as children of God. God builds our character. He makes us uh, to who we are. We have these experiences that we're able to share with others. But there's nothing that you can go through that, that you can go to that God won't bring you through. God never loses a battle. So as long as you keep your hand in his hand, he will win as well. He will help you to defeat every Goliath in your life. And even pastor preached a message saying the giants keep coming sometimes. Uh, well, he told us that Goliath had some brothers. So Goliath wasn't the end. Those giants keep coming. You keep fighting them in the name of the Lord. Bless you. I love you. Are there any questions from our youth? Any questions from the adults? Um, all I want to say was the date, you got the date wrong. It was the fourth. You know, this is Thursday. We had <gasps> last week. Yes, it was definitely the right. Okay, you are definitely right. So if you put in the um you're right, today is Thursday, Thursday rather than Tuesday. We generally meet on Tuesday. Thank you so much, Sister Lee. So it should be the 19th, and I'm sorry, the 13th and 11 months, and the 4th, the 13th and the 4th. But if you got that, I'll go back and change it for you. Thank you, Sister Lee. Thank you so much. God bless you, young people. You stay safe. Everybody stay safe. Look, when you go to school, keep your mask on. I know you got children at school who will not keep the mask over their nose. That is an illusion that you are protecting. An illusion is something that looks like it's real, but it's not real. And so when we wear our masks below our noses, we give the semblance, we give the appearance that we are protected. But unless it's over your nose, you are not protected. Don't be impressed by these people who are going around who are not wearing their masks. Wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your hands away from your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. God bless you. We pray God's blessings over you.